David Saki and today I just want to just share a very important word uh, with you uh, Father God we pray that you bless this word in Jesus name Amen I want to just share with you about the wisdom of counsel the wisdom of counsel now this is very important the wisdom of counsel now let's turn to 1st Samuel chapter 25 verse 30 to 33 it says and it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that uh, he hath spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel that this shall be no grief unto thee nor offense of heart unto my Lord either that thou has shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. So this is a time when Abigail was uh, with, you know, you know, her husband, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, her husband, uh, what's his, he, he, he called? Um, I think I've, I've, I've lost track. Um, Nabal, sorry. Her husband Nabal was, was going, you know, this, uh, spoke to David in a wrong way. David had helped his uh, flock, helped his sheep. And imagine, David helped his sheep and uh, protected his sheep. Then, when the, the, uh, uh, then David sent some people to, to uh, Nabal. And when he sent the people to Nabal, Nabal treated them unfairly and said, Come on, get out of here. Who is David? Who is he? Who is he to you? Leave it. I, I don't have time for him. I'm not going to even deal with him. I'm not going to give him any bread. So David got upset when he heard about it and was going to destroy the whole house of Nabal. So Abigail came and said all these things to him. That do not destroy Nabal. Do not just shed blood causeless. Because if you do that, when God elevates you, what is going to happen when God elevates you it's going to become a snare unto you then David said in verse 32 and David said to Abigail blessed be the Lord God of Israel which sent thee this day to me verse 33 and blessed be thy advice and blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand so David acknowledged that the advice that Abigail gave him was a very blessed advice, was a very good advice. So I want to share with you about the wisdom of counsel. But I want to say God bless you all those on Facebook Live. I want to say you are blessed and I want to say thank you for joining. And uh, I see uh, uh, Laura, I see Tele Light. Uh, I want to say you are blessed and thanks for joining. So now this is very important, the wisdom of counsel. Many people don't know the importance of counsel, but counsel is so important. The Bible says a lot about counsel. Now some people might ask, what, what kind of counsel? I mean, why is counsel so important? What are the kind, of, the kind of things that you need counseling for? I remember some time back, there was a major decision myself and my family were gonna take. You know, this was many years ago and uh, we needed to make a move or do, you know, do something very, very important. Then I asked my pastor, Apostle Joel, Apost Apostle Joel, what, what should I do in this situation? I'm at a crossroads. I don't know what to do. I have two major decisions, two major choices, and I don't know what to do. Then my pastor said, pray to God so that God will show me what to tell you. And that's what I did, and God gave me the right advice. Now, what are some of the things that you and I might need counsel for? We might need counsel for, for example, for buying a home. Buying a home is very, very important. Many people feel that you just buy a home just like that. But sometimes, many people who are not really, uh, don't know much about finances or about what it takes to buy a home might miss out on it. For example, many people might feel that exactly what the, 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 the monthly payments that you are given are all you need to pay. They've forgotten about mortgage insurance, they've forgotten about homeowners insurance, they've forgotten about the higher utility bills because you have a home. There, we, we, we also have the interest rates, we have the, the, the purchase price appraisals, 
inspection details there are so many details that people might not know about and might get a bad deal without counsel so many people must learn that when you are making a major decision it doesn't it's, it, it, it helps it's not that bad to just seek counsel from someone who knows more about what you you are about to do you never know it really help also for example even buying a car People will be surprised about you know the purchase price, uh, affordability. You know, even for example, a, mo a, a mortgage. You, you, you want to do it. You want to um, go into a mortgage. If you get good advice from someone who knows more about finances, or and, and someone who is also spiritual, they would advise you that look, don't just go for the big dream house immediately. Rather, take your time and just buy something cheaper for now. And so that you'll be able to pay it off very, very quickly within a few years. And then you would have enough capital, you would have uh, 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 you know, um, equity, you would have savings, you have enough to be able to purchase the dream house. But many people just go straight away, they've gotten a new job, they don't even wait, and then they purchase a house. All these things you might get very good counsel from, from someone who knows about it, who is also spiritual. A, a car. Do you need to buy your dream car now? If you, you've just started life, you've just started working, yes, you've got a good job, you've just started working, it doesn't mean that you go straight away and just get your dream car. So all these things, many people don't know about them. Many people don't know that you can get counsel. And when you get the right counsel, you'll be surprised that it will save you a lot of money. A lot of money. Even, for example, credit cards, credit finances, the, it, the list goes on. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, What sorrow for the land ruled by a servant, the land whose leaders feast in the morning. Then verse 17 says, Happy is the land whose king is a noble leader and whose leaders feast at the proper time to gain strength for their work, not to get drunk. So the Bible is saying that it, it, it is, it's not the best to have a leader who eats in the morning or eats before they need to eat or buys or, 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 or gets benefits before it is time. But it is good to get a leader who, or, 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 yeah, a leader who would wait for the appropriate time, the proper time in order to do so. Look for example at even marriage. Many people enter into marriage without realizing that they should have sought counsel. Very, very important. For example, when you are talking to someone and you like the person, your eye, you, you are kind of blind to certain things. You are kind of blind to certain things that you should look out for. Because many times, because of, of, of the, the fact that you like the person, you will not look out for things that are signals that this is not the right person. Because you'll be surprised at the number of people who did not seek counsel from someone else who was neutral, who could take a good look and, and, and look at your, the, the, your blind spots. But many people will not seek counsel for that and because of that, they enter into the wrong marriages. Now also, it is not that, that now you can seek counsel, but what kind of counsel are you seeking for? Are you seeking for the right counsel are you seeking counsel from the right person? Who are you seeking counsel from? Are you, because many people can seek counsel from someone they know would, would agree with them. Because depending on what you want to do, to do you can agree with the wrong person. You, 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 can, you can choose counsel from the wrong person. You can choose counsel from someone you know would agree with you. Let's say, for example, you are getting, of course, this cuts across everything in life. But let's get, take marriage for example. Let's assume you meet someone, a lady meets a guy who has a very good job, has a good career, went to a good school, is doing work uh, well financially. That is not all there is to, to, to a marriage. The fact that someone is doing well financially does not mean they will treat you well. The fact that someone is doing well financially and has a good job and came from a good home does not mean that you'll be happy in your marriage or that the person, you and the person are compatible. What about their spirituality? What, you know, so imagine you meet a, a, a lady, meets a guy who has all these qualities but does not go to church, 
doesn't believe in God or does not really that does not, is not really committed to God in a certain way. Such a lady would hardly seek counsel from their pastor. They would rather seek counsel from a friend who would say, "Yes, go ahead. This is it. This is it. You've striped it rich. Yes, you or, or rather you've gotten the right person. A person who is focused, who is career minded. Yes, it's good to have someone career minded." Rather, you should seek counsel from a pastor or from someone who is spiritual, who would not only look at the career, which is important, but also look at the spiritual aspect. Very important. When you, before you marry, you must seek counsel from your parents because it is very important for your parents to agree before you marry, reluctantly or unreluctantly. Whatever the case may be, it's very, very important. So these are some of the things that people make a mistake in doing. Look, for example, at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. The Bible says, Do not be bound together or do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? So the Bible is making it clear, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So these are some of the things that are very important. Counseling is so important that most states, most states give a very, very large discount to people who have premarital counseling before they, they marry. What am I, let me repeat that again. Most states give a very large discount to anyone applying for a mar applying for a marriage license who has done premarital counseling they get a very large discount because of the divorce rates because they know the importance of counseling but many people including christians don't know the importance now let me give us a few verses that are very very important look at proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 the bible says in proverbs 11:14 where no counsel is the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So in the multitude of counsel, in the multitude of counselors, in the multitude of a number of counselors, you are safe. If you are dealing with something financial and you seek financial counsel from someone who is financially uh, uh, able, or who knows a bit about finances. If you are seeking, seeking counsel about a particular area and, uh, or you are doing something in a particular area and you seek counsel from someone who is well versed or who is knowledgeable in that area, you are doing well. So the Bible is saying that where there is no counsel, the people fall, the people are discouraged, the people don't do well. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So if you are about to embark on an, a, a great expedition or you are about to do something different, something new, you are about to do something that has not been done before or you have not done before, you are safe when there is counsel. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of, of counselors, they are established. So without counsel, all our purposes, all our plans, all our things we want to do will be disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, the things that we have planned will be established. Our buying of our houses will be established. Our buying of our car will be established. The things we need to do with our homes, even how to raise children, will be established. Even who we marry will be established. How to, to live your life, how to even stay married, will be established in the multitude of counselors. Oh, what a verse. Proverbs 15, 22. That's a powerful verse. Without counsel, purposes, my purposes, your purposes will be disappointed. They will not work. But in the multitude of counselors, the purposes that we have will be established. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. So it means that when you have counsel, you will have longevity. The things that you have sought counsel for, you will have longevity in them. They will last. But remember, there, is, there, there's, there are different types of counsel. I remember there was a time that I was going to do something which is not really a bad thing. 
but it wasn't ethical in a way. And I asked a pastor who I knew would speak the truth to me. But I was hoping that he would kind of agree with what I was saying. When I, uh, this was Bishop Ogo. When I asked him, he made it very clear that this thing, you know that this is not right. You know that even though it's not like a big sin, you know that God will not be excited about it. So I would encourage you not to do it. Trust me, I, would have, I could have asked a number of people who would have said, yes, this is a good idea. Why not? Everyone does it. Everyone at work does it. You can do it. Yes. It is not a wrong thing. It is not a crime. But it is just something that when you, when you are with God, you will not necessarily do. So many people... All these verses in the multitude of counselors, there is safety everywhere. Is a, every purpose is established. You will you, be wise and in your latter end. All these things come about when you choose the right counsel. You choose people who are going to give you godly counsel. People who are going to give you counsel that is ordained of God. People who are going to give you counsel which helps you. So look for a counselor who has your best interest. Who has your interest at heart? Who, 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 someone who wants you to succeed. Someone who wants you to, to excel. Don't choose someone who is just looking at one side. Yes, you are married. Yes, there's financial stability, but you are crying every day. One of the leading causes of divorce, not only, of course, there's communication, lack of communication, adultery. Finances is one of the big ones. And it's not because the couple don't have money. There are people who earn $200,000, $300,000 a year together, I mean, joint and uh, annual income joint, and are divorcing because of finances. So, it has not, so, so, so you, you might choose counsel from someone who is looking, oh, he's a tall guy, or she's a beautiful girl, lady. She has the, the structure, she has the figure. Wow, look at her figure. Or look at the guy, he has muscles. That is not what you look for. You don't look for muscles in a marriage. You look for the complete picture. You need to make sure your parents are in good in agreement. You need to make sure that you, you seek counsel from someone who is going to look at the finances because the person must be established. If I am giving counsel to someone, I'm going to make sure that the person is going to be doing well or the person has the potential to do well. But I'm going to make sure that the person is spiritual so they don't drag you down spiritually. Because what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So know to choose the right counsel. Let's continue. We have a, a couple more. Proverbs 24, 6 says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in a multitude of counselors there is safety. So with wise counsel you can make your war. You can, you can fight the right battles. You can fight the battles that you will succeed in. There are many battles people fight, but which battle will cause you to succeed? Which battle will bring you the victory? Which battle will make sure that you succeed? Because there, there are different ways to war. The Bible says you must fight the good fight of faith. There are many fights to fight. Which fight are you fighting? Are you fighting the fight you are in your marriage? You are fighting. There, there are so many fights. Are you fighting your employer? Are you fighting other people instead of fighting the principalities behind them? What are you fighting? What are you fighting? So, 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 so that's why the Bible says, for by wise counsel, you would, you, you would do your warfare properly. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the ways or the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So now you have sought good counsel. After seeking good counsel, did you hearken unto it? Most people, deep down in their hearts, they know that the right counsel has been given to them, but usually, the right counsel that is good for you and I are difficult. So many people, after seeking the right counsel, deep down they know that is the right thing, but they will not do it. That is not going to give you a victory. That is not going to cause your purposes to be established. Because there is a difference between hearing counsel and doing it. 
It is not the hearers of the law that are justified, but it is the doers of the law that are justified before God. Hallelujah to Jesus. So very, very important. Who we seek the counsel from will determine a lot of things. So it's important to have it in mind that when there is a situation, before you and I do anything in this life, before we take any major decisions, it is important to seek wise counsel. And the wise counsel must first come from God himself. Don't ask any pastor, don't ask any human being any counsel without praying about it first. Because when you pray about it, God is going to give your counselors the right words for you. Because there are many Christians who have made big mistakes that have affected them for the rest of their lives because they did not seek for counsel. And many times it takes a long time, many years, to come out of that, of, of that problem that they've been through or, 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 or that problem they have. So it is very, very important. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Every purpose is established through counsel. So number one, make sure, I am making sure of that, it is important to make sure that when you are about to do something, make sure that God is in the, the, the center of it. Speak to him first. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, I believe verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Verse, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. For whatsoever is is born or initiated of God overcomes the world. So when you are about to do something and you speak to God first, then God initiates it. And because he initiates it, it will overcome the world, it will overcome wrong, it will overcome defeat because God is in it. Very important. Number two, seek counsel from the right source. If you are dealing with a financial problem or you are in debt and you are trying to come out of debt, seek counsel from someone who has a lot of knowledge on finances and how to come out of debt. Don't seek knowledge from someone who is deep in debt, even deeper than you. Hallelujah. When you are seeking for counsel concerning a marriage or relationships, seek for counsel from someone who is spiritual and who is in a relationship himself. Be like David. And the third thing is to make sure you are like David who, when he, was, he received counsel, he said, blessed be God who gave me the advice and blessed be the person who God has used to give me the advice. Very, very important. And God will bless you. Because in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Do not make the mistake again by doing things your own way. Yes, I'm in my own person. Yes, you are independent. But God has made us as sheep. And not as people who don't need each other. We need each other. The Lord is our shepherd. And the Lord has given us under shepherds. And one of the best counsel you and I can have is our pastor. Our pastor is the best counsel, best for finances, best for buying a home, best for buying a car, best for your marriage, making sure your parents are in approval. If your pastor is in approval of your marriage, or the, your partner who you want to marry, that's a man, you're, you're a lady and you, the, the, the man you want to marry, your pastor is in approval of it, or a woman and, your, and, and your, 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 the, the man you want to marry, or the, the man and the woman you want to marry, and your pastor is in approval, but your parent is not in approval, it can negate it. It's not going to work because your parents might be involved. Very important. So let's seek the right counsel. Very, very important. And God will bless us. And when we ask for counsel, try to fulfill it. Try to do it. Because it is not those who seek for counsel who get the blessing. It is those who seek for it and who practice it. I hope this has encouraged you. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Every purpose is established through counsel. God bless you. God bless you. This is all we have. 
uh, I have for you today that counsel will determine how well you will do. You would avoid certain terrible mistakes that people have made that have caused them to, make, uh, to, to end up in zero. That has caused them to end up in ruin. Many people have entered into terrible agreements, terrible financial agreements, terrible situations because they did not seek for godly counsel. That from today you are seeking for godly counsel. From today I'm seeking for godly counsel. Because in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. God first, and then God would speak through your counselors to give you the best counsel. God bless you. God bless you. Father God, I pray for each and every one listening. I pray that you would cause us to have wise and godly counsel. Cause us to understand the importance of counsel. Because we know, oh God, that Jesus Christ is our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. He is our paracletos, our counselor. And we know that he counsels us also through other people. We know that he can counsel us through his inner witness. But even with that, we still seek counsel from you. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. So seek counsel and be blessed. Look at Apostle Paul. God gave him the revelations, the abundant revelations about Christianity. And yet he went to the apostles who were with Jesus to seek counsel to make sure that he was not in error. And you and I can do the same. Now, if you are watching and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are not born again. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. If you know in your heart that you are far away from God, and you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be born again. Then I want you to just raise your hands where you are. And repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From today, I belong to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you if you've said this prayer for the first time or you've rededicated your life to Christ. I want to encourage you to write a note to let us know the greatest miracle has occurred in your life. Father God, I thank you for all those who have given their lives to Christ. Bless them, grant them favor, grant them peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all and thanks for joining. I see Reverend Mark, I see Clara, I see Emmanuel, I see a number of you. God bless you. I see Thomas, I see so many of you and I want to say God bless you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. May God's blessings be your portion. May the blessings of the Lord which make rich and added no sorrows be your portion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord Jesus cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and may he give you peace. May the blessings of the Lord which make rich and added no sorrows be your portion. May you be blessed all the days of your life. May goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And may you and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you and thanks again for joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Shalom, shalom.